Smart devices make our lives better, but they're also susceptible to hackers. That's why Plume helps identify when a device is acting strange. You mean like talking to itself for no reason? I'm talking to the audience. Welcome everyone. Girls Softball, then Danny Van Hoos, Ken Hall, Wayne Pugin, and Brian Lee with you from Archer Park. The I believe it's the uh, Dickerson Field, I believe it is. But uh, anyway, we're set for high school girls softball action on the Intermountain Sports Network tonight. There's a uh, rematch, Ken, of last year's 15th region final. The Prestonsburg Lady Black Cats will play host to the Pikeville Panthers. And Elizabeth Baird Sayers team comes in here with a record of 17 and 6 to face the host Black Cats, who come in at 12 and 5. Sayer assisted her, her coaching, uh, assisted in her coaching duties by Misty Haynes. Prestonsburg coaching staff consists of Bridget Clay, Johnny Sloan, and Philip Dameron. Should be quite a matchup here. These are probably the best two teams in the region. They are two certainly good teams. Brandy Sloan will be on the mound, left-hander. For the Lady Black Cats, she'll face Emily Johnson here to lead things off. And we are underway. First pitch low and in the dirt. Ball one. One thing about this Pikeville Ball Club, Ken, they, uh, they're very fundamentally sound. They will uh, they have a good, good eye at the plate and will get on and manufacture runs. Strike at the knees. Good pitch that time by Brandy Sloan. One and one. Angela Howe behind the plate for the Lady Black Cats. Margaret Dameron, Kimmy Nunnery, Shelly Greathouse, and Amelia Conley make out your infield. And that pitch was a little bit high, ball two. In the outfield for Prestonsburg, you have Megan Hyden, Brooke Coleman, and Stacy Stacy Goble. The 2-1, a little bit low, 3-1. and one. Sloan in danger of putting the leadoff hitter on. Emily Johnson, the shortstop for the Lady Black Cat, or Lady Panthers. 3-1 straight down Peachtree, as uh, Skip Carey used to say. <laughs> Full count. The 3-2, swung on and missed, and there's the strikeout. So Brandy Sloan comes back from a 3-1 count and sits Emily Johnson down with a nice fastball on the outside part of the plate. Jill Kimberlane, the second baseman, should be up. I'll check that. Uh, Samantha Nara is up. That's uh, inconsistent with the lineup that I have. We've got these two flip-flopped here on our lineup. Nara lays a bunt down. It goes foul down the first baseline. And I think there's some conversation right now. Maybe about that lineup, but nonetheless, 0 and 1 the count on some Samantha Nara. Sloan rocks and fires, and it's swung on and fouled off the right side. 0 and 2. So after falling behind 3 and 1 to the first hitter, Brandy Sloan has thrown four straight strikes now. Nara will be followed by Jill Kimberlane, Allison Harris, and Michelle Hall, if we get that far. And my lineup's correct. <laughs> <laughs> the 2 swung on, grounded to first. Dameron picks it up and steps on the bag for out number two. So two up and two down for the Lady Panthers. As we said last year, this uh, this is the two teams it came down to. I think it was, uh, hopefully my memory's not too far off, but about a 13 to two score or something in that neighborhood for the final. First pitch swung on, fouled straight back by Kimberling. Owen won the count, Brandy Sloan. The senior. She's had a nice career here as a softball player at Prestonsburg. She rocks and fires a little bit high. One and one, the count. Kent, 
Wasn't sure we was going to be able to get this one in. Looked pretty uh, ominous all day long, but started to come around. Yes, it has. We have had a little bit of rain this week. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this I, saw, this I, saw a couple people, good. I saw a couple people starting to build on an arc, but I don't know if that many there. <laughs> Two and one the count. Sloan ready, and she fires low. Three and one. Allison Harris, the right fielder on deck. The 3-1, swung on, fouled straight back. Runs the count full. While my buddy sneezes. <laughs> You make an awful lot of noise even when you take the headset off the yeah, stage. Yeah, I do, yeah. <laughs> Full count now with two gone. Top of the first inning. Sloan's pitch outside, ball four. So Jill Kimberlane draws a two-out base on balls. That'll bring up Allison Harris. Discussion right now, I would imagine, would be over batting out of order and the Panthers are penalized for batting out of order and Jill Kimberlane who just drew that walk has been uh, has been called out for uh, batting out of turn so uh, with that we come to the end of the half of a half inning here with your score Pikeville Lady Panthers nothing Prestonsburg coming up we'll be right back this is your Intermountain Sports Network more than ever we're all living online right now it's one more reason using online account management from Gearheart Communications just makes sense. Visit ecare.gearheart.com to sign up so you can pay your bill, review your statements, or set up worry-free automatic payments, all without leaving your home. Make life a little easier. Online account management from Gearheart Broadband. Sign up today at ecare.gearheart.com. Mountain Sports on the road. We are in Archer Park in Prestonsburg, Kentucky. And at the end of a half inning, there's no score here. Prestonsburg now coming up to bat. Angela Howell, the catcher, will lead off. She'll be followed by Shelly Greathouse and Kimmy Nunnery. Wendy Phillips on the mound for Pikeville. She's, and she blows the first one by Angela Howell. Strike one. Set the defense here just in a second. Second pitch, nice pitch by Phillips. Had Hal fooled on that one and just blew it by her. 0-2 the count. Phillips is battery mate. And the pitch is swung on, grounded to first. Be handled right there by Katrina Potter, first baseman. One down. That'll bring up Shelly Greathouse. Again, that battery mate for Wendy Phillips tonight is Amber Trimble. Around the infield is Potter at first base, as we said. Jill Kimberlane plays second. Third base is Sam Nara. And at short is Emily Johnson. First pitch to Greathouse. Swung on and driven into center field for a base hit. Nice solid hit by Shelly Greathouse. Yes, it was. She hit that one on the screws. A line shot right back up the middle. Prestonsburg now with a runner aboard. The first hit of the evening. Kimmy Nunnery at the plate. Kimmy, an excellent athlete, the senior. First pitch swung on. She's a little out front in that one. A 1-1. One -one. Outfield for Pikeville, left, left center and right is Michelle Hall, Sarah Boyd, and Allison Harris. The 0-1 in there are outside for a ball. One and one to count. I said outside, I'm not sure. But anyway, back up the middle. And chance for two here, but she can't come up with it, but finally does. Emily Johnson had trouble coming up with that one, but uh, she does get the force on Shelly Greathouse, so two gone now. Nunnery will be safe at first with on a fielder's choice. It's a dangerous play there as far as uh, 
turning two, Ken, because the ball was hit right at second. So had Johnson been able to pick that one up cleanly, it's a good shot for a double good play. shot at a double play. Yes, she did. First pitch to Amelia Conley is in there for a strike at the knees. Conley, a power hitter among the Prestonsburg lineup. Pitch outside, one and one, your count. Two gone, bottom of the first, no score. Lady Panthers of Pikeville and the Lady Black Cats of Prestonsburg. Ball two. The umpire, Bill Watson. Two and one to count now on Amelia Conley. Phillips his pitch in the dirt, goes all the way to the screen, and Nunnery will advance to second. So a runner in scoring position now, base hit by Conley of any length, could uh, plate the first round of this ball game. Three and one to count on a Conley. Phillips' his pitch is swung on and grounded to short. Johnson up with it, she'll fire across. And what's the call? In time, they say. Out. It looks like very close. close. Very close. Don't know about that one, but nonetheless, that'll do it for the first inning. And at the end of one complete, your score, nothing, nothing. We'll be right back. This is your Intermountain Sports Network. With families spending more time at home together this year, it's a great time to level up your internet for the speed and Wi-Fi you need to power game consoles and computers at peak performance. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to upgrade. This changes everything. Gearheart TV is available now. It's the digital TV service delivered to your smart TV or connected devices by Gearheart Broadband. Sign up now at mygtv.com. Night's action between the Lady Black Cats of Prestonsburg and the Lady Panthers of Pikeville. And one thing about it, Ken, that was a very good call by the official as we slowed it down. Our buddy Wayne Fugit here backed the tape up, looked at it again, and out by less than half a step, but a good call. Good to call. The first inning. Good job by Wayne Fugit and Brian Lee. Oh. Wayne says who? I can hear him in the background. Allison Harris will lead things off here. She's the cleanup hitter. She was on her way to the plate when the appeal about uh, batting out of order caused the Panthers' first inning to come to a close. And the pitch is swung on a foul, uh, hit foul down the right side. Brandy Sloan on the mound for the Lady Black Cats against Allison Harris here. Sloan's pitch a little high. Pitch in there, call strike three. Second strikeout for Brandy Sloan. Sloan's really throwing the ball hard. Brandy got off to a little bit of a slow start early in the season. I think she may have had a little tenderness in the arm as early season, uh, you know, putting that much pressure on it, but uh, has really gotten strong as this season has gone along. Michelle Hall now, the left fielder. She'll stand in there. Face Sloan, Sloan's first pitch is in there at the knees. Strike one, nice pitch. That pitch, uh, Ken, right at the knees like that with the speed that she put on it, that's gonna be tough for anybody to hit. No one swung on and grounded to first. Margaret Dameron up with it. She steps on the bag, two down. So two up and two down here as Bratina Potter. Check that. Matrina Potter. Had trouble with that name uh, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> she will stand in. Potter pitched an excellent game against the Lady Wildcats of Shelby Valley a couple weeks ago in a game we were able to bring to you. And the first pitch swung on and grounded to Dameron, and she will get her third put out, and that'll do it. And at the end of an inning and a half, your score, nothing, nothing. We'll be right back. This is your Intermountain Sports Network. Now's your chance for a great deal on smoke and fast internet from Gearheart Broadband. Upgrade to the smoldering speed you need, up to one gig, and add Plume Adaptive Wi-Fi to reach every corner of your home. Experience no lag gaming, your favorite music, web surfing, HD video streaming, and connect to the latest smart devices. If you're ready for an upgrade, call or click Gearheart Broadband for a great offer today. 
know you're not gonna believe this. What's going on? The neighbors got hacked again. Weird. We never get hacked. Nope. No, we don't. With you. Brooke Coleman, center fielder, will stand in. Brooke has really been hitting the ball well. Talked with Coach Clay that uh, prior to this game, she's up to about a 450 clip. So she'll stand in against Wendy Phillips. First pitch outside part of the plate and at the knees. Good pitch for a call. Strike one. Phillips is 0-1. Swung on and popped up into right field. And with a little trouble with it, and it's going to be an error. But uh, the runner will... Uh, We'll make it there. The error on Allison Harris as she had trouble battling the sun, looked as if uh, maybe. But uh, runner aboard, Brooke Coleman. Ball hit the glove of Harris and bounced away. Margaret Dameron, who plays first for the Lady Black Cats, will stand in now with Brooke Coleman at first. First pitch swung on and missed. I think she may have got a piece yeah, of that she, one, but she got a piece of it. Come on, Come on, Phillips is 0-1 pitch. And Dameron swings and misses. Trimble trying to catch Coleman dancing down at first. One thing about Amber Trimble, if uh, they stray too far, she's not afraid to fire it. Excellent young catcher. 0-2 to your count, nobody down, bottom of the second inning. Pitch is tapped to third, Nara up with it, she'll fire across. And record the out of Dameron, but Brooke Coleman will advance to second on the play. So Margaret Dameron able to move the runner up a, up a space. Put that runner into scoring position, and Brandy Sloan will stand in now to try to help herself a little bit. First pitch gets away from Trimble, and Coleman will move to third. So a sacrifice fly now will uh, score the run. So Brandy Sloan now in the driver's seat here against Wendy Phillips. 1-0 at the knees, but off the plate, 2-0. Look for Phillips to send one in this time. She does, and right by Sloan, who had the green light. Stacy Goble waits on deck. One down, bottom of the second inning. No score. Phillips' pitch is tapped foul. Evens the count up at two and two, so. Nice job by Wendy Phillips there, Ken, as she got behind two and oh, and she's battled back to even. So the 2-2 two -two on the way, and took a little off that one, but outside outside for runs account full. Nice change there. You see that? That was a yeah, great yeah. change there. Fastball driven to second, and that'll score the run. Camberlane up with it over to first uh, for the out, but Prestonsburg will plate the first run. They jump out on top here, one nothing. Good fundamental softball there. Uh, can. You know, you get uh, get the air and you try to take advantage of it. Excellent job. Runner moved on a fielder's choice and then also a pass ball. Scored on a ground out. First pitch in the dirt. Ball one. Stacy Goble, the right fielder. Nice pitch right at the knees. Evens the count up at one and one. Goble also pitches for the Lady Black Cats. Has really come on this year as a pitcher. And it's right back off of Phillips and she's gonna be safe. Is Stacy Goble, good hustle. That one a liner right back at Wendy Phillips. She tells umpire Bill Watson she's fine. That one bounced off of, uh, it appeared to be bounced off maybe her glove, but it may have been her leg also. But over to Sam Nara. That'll bring up the ninth place hitter, Megan Hyden. If memory serves me, Ken, I believe Megan is only a freshman. Quite a young athlete, though. Starting left fielder. Swung on and missed. 
And Trimble fires to first. Goble back in time. Angela Howe awaits on deck. Pitch a little bit low. And strike three called, and that'll do it. But after the after two full innings of play, your score, the Lady Black Cats of Prestonsburg won. The Lady Panthers of Pikeville nothing. We'll be right back. This is your Intermountain Sports Network. Any home can be improved with better Wi-Fi. That's why Gearheart Broadband offers Plume Wi-Fi, a reliable signal throughout your home, enhanced by mobile app features. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to learn more. We live in a modern, connected world. Your smart home security system should keep pace with your on-the-go life, giving you a view of your home and the ability to control what happens at your front door as if you were there. The best deterrent, peace of mind, at home or away. Protect what's important to you. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. Berg on top, one nothing. And for the Lady Panthers, catcher, or, yeah, catcher Amber Tremble will stand in against Brandy Sloan. She'll be followed by Sarah Boyd and Wendy Phillips, the pitcher. That'd be correct. That's why you're here, Ken, just to lend so much knowledge. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm telling you. Sloan's first pitch in there. Call strike one. One thing about this Center Mountain Sports crew, we can improvise. We've got stuff <laughs> all over. It'll take three days to wrap up the cords. <laughs> the old one swung on a missed. 0 and 2. Randy Sloan really in a groove. She started out just a touch shaky. Went 3 and 1, I think, on the first batter, and since then has really settled down. And that one well over the head of Trimble, but she fouls it away anyhow. Girls, high school girls softball, really a sport, Ken, that uh, I think a lot of people need to get out and check out. Actually, there's a good crowd here on hand. Yes, and there is. The 0-2 swung on a miss. That's the third strikeout for Brandy Sloan. One guy on top of the third. Sarah Boyd, the center fielder, will stand in. Sarah, if you remember Ken, I think was one of the first Intermountain Sports Players of the Week in basketball during the last season. Yes, she was. Quite a basketball player. She fakes a bunt and went too far for strike one. I wouldn't won the count. And she was player of the week against what team? Well, uh, you can't ask me all them questions. Well, it was the Prestonsburg Lady Black Cats. Well, see, your memory just a, sh just a touch sharper than mine. <laughs> Unfortunately, could be one and one. Could be because I was there to call the game and uh -huh. you weren't. So yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, there's the unfair advantage. Uh -huh. I knew you had a reason. <laughs> one one, a little bit high, ball two. Two balls in one strike. I was there the night that Brooke Coleman, center fielder for Prestonsburg, won her player of the week. And that was against whom? South Floyd. Okay. That's correct. It. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I knew that. Three and one to count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now mess with me. Huh? You the night the lights went out Wayne Fugit went over. That's ball four, by the uh, way. Wayne Fugit went over. I was there the night the lights went out in Georgia. I don't. I don't think he said Georgia. Well, one of them states. Now they went. Did go out. But anyway, <laughs> Wendy Phillips will stand in now. We need to keep her mind on this ball game here. Runner at first, and she fakes to go on, going to second. And Angela Howe ready to fire it. So Boyd thinks better of it. One ball, no strikes. Sloan needs to settle down here. Pitch is swung on and knocked foul. I believe it's going to be out of play. It will. Almost hit three little kids in the head, but none of them got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Two-thirds of the zoo crew, along with <laughs> Wayne Fugit and Brian Lee. I tell you, you don't know what you're going to get when you get the Intermountain Sports team. <laughs> one and one to count here on Wendy Phillips. Sloan's pitch is high. The runner goes, and she'll be in there safe. The stolen base is Sarah Boyd. 
Nice throw that time by Angela Howe, but just a little bit late. I forgot what the count is, Ken. <laughs> Pitch strike at the knees. Two and two. I know there's two strikes now, but. Uh, two balls, two strikes. Okay. So our boy at second. And the pitch is hit off the fist to Nunnery. She knocks it down, has trouble with it, and everybody's safe as Boyd will come advance to third, and Phillips will be aboard, aboard on the air. Kimmy Nunnery uh, just couldn't get the handle on that one. Of course, I know we've had this discussion before. Softball doesn't have a handle. Have but a that's, handle just, on. that's just an expression before you jump on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Emily Johnson will stand in now. Runners at first and third. Nobody will check that one down. Pikeville with an excellent chance to tie the game here. And really do some damage. They really have a threat going here with a one out. And fake the bunt did Johnson. And courtesy runner is Brown. Don't have your first name. But uh, last name is Brown. She's in there as a courtesy runner for uh, Wendy Phillips. She advances with a stolen base. 2-0 the count now on... Emily Johnson, so Brandy Sloan really in a really in <laughs> trouble. <laughs> okay, oh my, here we my. go. And ball three, well high. Brandy Sloan really struggling now as she was given a one nothing lead at the end of two and has really struggled here at the top of the third inning. These Lady Panthers, Ken, they are some kind of fundamentally sound team. They will jump on you every chance they can. Sloan's 3-0, high ball four, and the bases are full for Jill Kimberlane. Kimberlane bats after Emily Johnson this time. That got him in trouble the first inning as uh, Kimberlane and Nara batted out of order, and that caused the third out after Kimberlane drew the walk, batting in the third position. This time she comes up one down, bases full, and Sloan wild high. One and oh, nowhere to put this one. Sloan's pitch popped up. Kimmy Nunnery giving chase and she can't get to it. And all kinds of people are gonna be moving as Christensburg looking for interference. We've got two players at third. Howe and Great House with a rundown on Brown and she's gonna be tagged out. That's the second out. And also, I believe they have called uh, interference at first. But one run did score, so we're all tied at the end of... Well, but at the end of two and a half innings, your score, we're all tied at one. We'll be right back. This is your Intermountain Sports Network. With families spending more time at home together this year, it's a great time to level up your internet for the speed and Wi-Fi you need to power game consoles and computers at peak performance. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to upgrade. This changes everything. Gearheart TV is available now. It's the digital TV service delivered to your smart TV or connected devices by Gearheart Broadband. Sign up now at mygtv.com. Sharing a big family moment, relaxing with a friend. Welcome to life in the broadband age. Gearheart Broadband keeps your family connected with consistent speeds and plume Wi-Fi. Call or go online to learn more. Archer, bottom of the third inning. We're all tied now at one as uh, a lot of action there on an infield fly, Ken. But uh, nonetheless, game tied at one. Wendy Phillips. Out here for her third inning of work. She'll face the top of the order, Angela Howe. First pitch outside and low, ball one. Howe will be followed by Great House and Nunnery. And the pitch is slapped down the left field line. Nice job by Howe, but uh, just foul. When it passed the bag, ended up next to the, over there in the ditch line, but <laughs> <laughs> it looked pretty good for a minute. One and one to count. Bottom of the third inning. 
Angela Howe. Pitch is high for a ball. Two and one. Three and one as Phillips works quickly here. Last two pitches well high. Three balls, one strike the count. Pitch is swung on and up the middle and it takes a funny hop there on that. What used to be the pitcher's mound and that will be a base hit as Angela Howe will be aboard with a what you would have to call a single because Emily Johnson had no chance after that ball hit the ground. So with a runner aboard, Shelly Greathouse will stand in. Nobody down. 1-1 one, one your score, bottom of the third inning. First pitch outside. Nice job of Trimble digging that one up. She fires the first. Howe back in time. Inside, as Great House had to get away of that one. Two and oh, the count. Trimble has done a nice job back there tonight. Nice pitch that time by Phillips. Great House taken all the way. Two and one, the count. Kimmy Nunnery on deck. And the pitch is back to Potter. Or check that Phillips. She goes to second for one. Over to first. Not in time, says the official. Nice job that time by Wendy Phillips as Whitewell tried to turn the double play, but Shelly Greathouse able to beat it out. So one gone, bottom of the third inning. Greathouse at first, Kimmy Nunnery will stand in. She swings at the first pitch, which is low, and for a strike. Saw our good buddy Ed Taylor down here covering this one. Yes, he Pitch is. Pitch smacked by Nunnery. They go to second. Kimberlane tries to turn it, and ball is dropped by Potter. I don't think it was going to be in time, but uh, another force play at second. So just that quickly, Prestonsburg has changed runners again. Kimmy Nunnery will be at first with Amelia Connolly standing in now. Two gone, bottom of the third inning. Score tied at one. Phillips' his first pitch well outside. Nunnery goes, and the throw down uh, hits Nunnery, and she'll be in there safe with a stolen base. So a runner in scoring position now for Amelia Conley. Conley can flat tag it if she gets a hold of it. Pitch is popped straight up as... Emily Johnson camps under it, and she'll squeeze it for out number three. And at the end of 3-4, your score, 1-1. Prestonsburg and Pikeville, we'll be right back. This is your Intermountain Sports Network. <laughs> oh, you're not going to believe this. What's going on? The neighbors got hacked again. Weird. We never get hacked. Nope. No, we don't. Use your smart home speaker to arm and disarm the system. A full line of cameras for both indoor and outdoor areas. So you can keep an eye on your property no matter where you are. Get an early alert for water leaks before you lose thousands of dollars to expensive flood damage. One easy to use interface for your phone and the slimline touchpad. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. for her fourth inning of work. First pitch is well over the head of Nara, and she knew it, and so did Coach Elizabeth baird Sayers. A wooden one to count. Sloan rocks and fires, and it's swung on and grounded to second. Nunnery up with it, over to Dameron, and that's in time for out number one. Nice play that time by Kimmy Nunnery. That ball, was, ball was hit extremely hard. Bring up Allison Harris. Harris struck out her first time up. Sloan fires in there, high for a ball. Yeah, 
the 1 0 is in just off the plate. 2 0. Oh, high for a ball, ball three. So after striking out Harris the first time around, Sloan starts her off with three straight pitches off the plate. Strike at the knees, makes it count three and one. Three one pitch in there, call strike two, full count now. Sloan able to battle back now and run the count full. And well over the head of Harris for ball four. Pot boys, we said, Ken, just really fundamentally sound team. They'll, they'll try to get aboard any way they can. Michelle Hall. Step to the plate, one gone, top of the fourth inning. Allison Harris out at first base. Sloan's first pitch is swung on and fouled, and nobody can get to it. Quite well, a bit of moisture over there, evidently, as coach, or as umpire Bill Watson. Takes care of that one. I wouldn't want to count. Score tied at one all. Sloan rocks and this one's in the dirt and Harris will advance to second. That'll move the runner up. And a little bit taken off that one, but too high. <laughs> Sloan's pitch high for ball three. Three and one to count. Three one is swung on and popped up. Mia Connolly says, I've got it, and she does for out number two. Katrina <laughs> Potter will stride to the plate now with two gone. One more, one more. Nice crowd here on hand tonight, Ken. Yeah, it certainly is. Lots of folks make the, making the trip down from Pikeville and Brestonsburg here at home with a good crowd on hand, so... Pitch at the knees, beautiful pitch by Brandy Sloan. In there for a strike. Sloan out in, out in front now, 0-1. Shelly Greathouse in about three steps at third. Potter, the top two, swing away. She drives it into right field, and that may score the run. Stacy Goble up with it. She fires it in, but well offline, and that's going to allow Potter to try to go to second. Sloan picks it up, and Potter will be at second on the throw, but uh, enough to plate the run. As Chris, or Michael has jumped out on top now, two to one. Here in the top of the fourth. Michelle Hall. I'll check that Amber Trimble will stand in. Runner in scoring position is Potter. Two gone, top of the fourth inning. Pike will now on top two to one. Pitch high from Sloan, ball one. Big two out base hit by Potter. As we said, you expect her to swing away. And this one driven past off the glove of Nunnery, and that may score another run as Goble up with it. She gets it into Sloan, and Sloan looks at the runner at third and allows Trimble to advance to second. So Pike will now really starting to uh, hit the ball a little bit here. Score still two to one, but with two, get, two gone, there's runners at second and third for Sarah Boyd.
Christiansburg needs to stop the damage right now. Boyd swings at the first pitch and fouls it against the screen. Sloan jumps out in front 0-1 here. Sloan's pitch is just off the plate, 1-1. One one. And low for ball two. So, Randy Sloan digging the hole here, trying to get out of this inning. for a ball, ball three. Three balls and one strike, so Sarah Boyd in the driver's seat here now, Ken, because if, if uh, the pitch is not close, she's on with a base on balls, and if it is, she's gonna have a good pitch to swing at. The three one, inside, ball four, and that'll load them up. And Wendy Phillips, the pitcher who can really help herself here, will come to the plate. Base is loaded with two outs. Christiansburg infield in at the corners. First pitch low for a ball. Sloan may be tiring here in the fourth. As the plate has forsaken her here. Sloan rocks and the pitch is at the knees. Call strike one. One and one the count. Pitch swung on, hit off the screws that time and Nunnery knocks it down. She'll fire the first in time for the out and that'll do it. As the run, run comes across, but it will not count as that was the third out. And at the end of three and a half innings of play, Pike will now lead two to one. We'll be right back. This is your Intermountain Sports Network. More than ever, we're all living online right now. It's one more reason using online account management from Gearheart Communications just makes sense. Visit ecare.gearheart.com to sign up so you can pay your bill, review your statements, or set up worry-free automatic payments all without leaving your home. Make life a little easier. Online account management from Gearheart Broadband. Sign up today at ecare.gearheart.com. Any home can be improved with better Wi-Fi. That's why Gearheart Broadband offers Plume Wi-Fi, a reliable signal throughout your home, enhanced by mobile app features. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to learn more. Your park. Pikeville on top now, two to one. Danny Van Hoos, Ken Hall, Brian Lee, and Wayne Fugit with you. Brooke Coleman will stand in against Wendy Phillips. Phillips has been staked to a one-run lead now. Pitch at the knees, call strike one against Brooke Coleman. Coleman will be followed by Margaret Dameron and Brandy Sloan. Pitch swung on and missed by Coleman. 0-2 the count now. Phillips seems to be getting stronger as the game progresses, Ken. Yes, she does. And this one stroke. Nice job by Brooke Coleman as she slapped that one into the left field for a base hit. As we had said earlier, Brooke Coleman has really started smacking the ball as the season has progressed here. An excellent job of hitting there that time. 0-2 at the, the count, and she slaps it into right field or into left field rather for a base hit. Margaret Dameron at the plate now. She tries to bunt and it's popped up by the out of beyond the reach of Nara and Trimble. Good hustle by both young ladies. I wouldn't want to count against Margaret Dameron. Run at first is Brooke Coleman. Coleman with good speed. Phillips rocks and fires. It's outside and Coleman May be venturing off into dangerous territory there as Trimble fires it down. Coleman able to get back, but uh, closer play than I'm sure they wanted. Pitch is bunted, and 
Phillips up with it, fires to first, and that'll advance the runner. Nice bunt. Nice, nice job by Margaret Dameron. She just deadened that ball right at the plate to advance the runner, so the sacrifice works. Runner in scoring position. The way these two pitchers can pitch, Ken, you know, any, a one-run uh, lead uh, could hold up, so you got to manufacture them any way you can. Sloan now in trying to uh, help her own cause. A base hit would probably score Coleman. Pitch outside for a ball. Low ball two. And strike at the knees. Brings the count to two and one. Phillips really works quick out there from the mound. She'll get that ball and fire it. And another strike right at the knees, so two Brandy, and two. Brandy Sloan looked at two balls, and then now she's looked at two straight strikes to even account up at two and two. And the pitch is swung on and grounded a second. Kimberlane up with it. She fires her to first, but uh, Potter came off the bag but had time to get back down on it. But Coleman will advance to third, and that'll bring up Stacy Goble, the right fielder. The runner has advanced on uh, two outs here, but uh, with two gone now, runner at third, tying run over at third in the person of Brooke Coleman. Goble singled her first time up. She looks at a strike at the knees. Phillips right now, Ken, just really bringing it in there, so Prestonsburg, you want to have to hit it. And the pitch is chopped foul behind the plate. 0-2 now. Owen 2 two gone, bottom of the fourth inning. Pottenville leading two to one. Phillips takes a little off and she fooled Goble. Nice strikeout that time. Good job by Wendy Phillips. And at the end of four full, your score still Pikeville on top, two to one. We'll be right back. This is your Intermountain Sports Network. This changes everything. Gearheart TV is available now. It's the digital TV service delivered to your smart TV or connected devices by Gearheart Broadband. Sign up now at mygtv.com. We live in a modern, connected world. Your smart home security system should keep pace with your on-the-go life, giving you a view of your home and the ability to control what happens at your front door as if you were there. The best deterrent, peace of mind, at home or away. Protect what's important to you. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. We're back here at Archer Park. Girls softball on your Intermountain Sports Network. And right now for the Lady Panthers, top of the order, Emily Johnson, and the ball is laid down. Dameron up with it, and she throws it past Nunnery. Good job by Stacy Goble to back that play up, but the runner aboard. Yeah, a yeah, nice bunt there. Nice job by Emily Johnson. Seemed to catch Prestonsburg napping a little bit as they got to the ball, but Nice, well played, placed bun. Jill Kimberlane stands in. She fakes a bunt, shows bunt. Johnson will advance a second with a stolen base. So Pike will looking for an insurance round here. Top of the fifth inning, they lead it two to one. And high ball two. Pitch is swung on and driven up the middle into center field for a base hit and through the hands of Brooke Coleman and that'll plate the run. Emily Johnson will score and good hustle that time by Kimberlane as she will advance all the way to second. And it's three to one now. And Sam Nara will stand in. Nobody down here, top of the fifth inning. Brandy Sloan's first pitch to her is in the dirt all the way to the screen, and Kimberlane will advance to third. What do you mean nobody down here? Prestonsburg is down three to one. Oh, 
Well, I meant uh, out-wise, you know. Oh, that's okay. A, Nobody out. You know, if you'd ever yeah. watch a baseball game. Wayne Fugger, <laughs> but anyway. Wayne Fugger's pretty laid back there, too. Looks yeah. like he's down. I didn't know he was going to bring a bed down here and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Pitch fouled away. One and one the count now on Sam Nara. Shelly Greathouse, well in, in a long way there at third, and this one looked like Sloan may have lost the grip on that one as it hit the dirt. About halfway between the pitcher's mound and home plate. Nice pitch by Sloan. Come back to even the count up two and two. Line outside, full count now on Sam Nara. No outs. Top of the fifth inning. Pikeville already with a run across. At the knees, call strike three. So Nara goes down. That's for out number one. Allison Harris will stand in now. One down. Michelle Hall on deck. Pitch outside for a ball. And Prestonsburg trying to catch Kimberlane napping, but she'd have none of that. Sloan's pitch in the dirt all the way to the screen. And down the line comes Kimberlane, but not a lot of room here behind home plate, so Unless the ball takes a funny hop, it's hard to score from third. Easier to advance maybe from first to second or second to third, but coming home, you're coming at the ball. Pitch is slapped almost. Nice job there. That, that pitch was laced down that right field line, but just foul. Deion Sanders could probably score from third. Went to the backstop here. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when he used to play for the Reds back in the good old days. But anyway, pitch by Sloan in there for a ball. Thrown for a ball, rather. And ball four. And that will put Allison Harris on first. You could about bet the ranch that Harris will be moving on the pitch because uh, Prestonsburg on the throw down would run the risk of allowing the run to score. So Michelle Hall will stand in. And she does go, and there's no throw. Runners at second and third, one gone. Top of the fifth inning. Pikeville leading three to one. Pitched a little bit low. Ball two. That one fouled straight back here. Two and one to count now. As you said a little bit earlier, Ken, if we don't get snowed out here on the uh, 29th of April, <laughs> we'll get this game in. Huh? So, quite a chill in the air. There certainly is. 2-1, high for a ball. 3-1. Sloan in danger of walking the bases full. She rocks and brings it in, and it's fouled down the left field line. Sloan may have took a little off that one. Full count, one out, top of the fifth inning. Pikeville leading three to one. In this battle of the two teams that it came down to last year in the 15th region final. And ball four, Brandy Sloan. That'll load them up for 
But Trina Potter, who last inning, or last time she was up, Ken, she absolutely smoked one to right field. Christiansburg's infield at double play depth. Ball gets away from Howell, but no one can advance. One ball, no strikes to count. Nowhere to put Potter. A walk will score the run. And over the head of uh, Potter for ball two. As Potter drove in the go-ahead run with that last at bat, that single. Pitch swung on and fouled straight back. Somebody lost part of a car. Sounded sounded pretty bad. I don't know if it was or not, Ken. Yeah, it's got a car. <laughs> Somebody goes home with a little bit of fluorescent green paint. <laughs> Sloan took a little something off that one, but it was high for a ball. Three balls, one strikes the count. One strike the count to Petrina Potter. Sloan brings it in there at the knees, but ball four. And that'll walk the run in as Kimberlane will score. Everybody will move up a spot. And Prestonsburg. Trails Pikeville now four to one. This three consecutive walks here for Sloan. Michelle Hall will stand in. And, or check that, I'm sorry, Amber Trimble. Trimble looks at ball one. So Brandy Sloan really struggling now with her control. That one popped up. I don't think Dameron will have a play. She will not. Even the count up at one and one. We almost got a real close up of that foul ball. It's it just behind the camera <laughs> on the first baseline. Yeah, so if your picture goes funny, it probably was because the ball <laughs> hit it. And this one fouled straight back. Uh, they ain't been off the fist there that time as Trimble winced when she uh, swung at that one. One ball, two strikes a count. Sloan brings it in, takes a little off, and it's right back to Sloan. She'll get the double play at third by throwing to Great House. Good recovery there by Brandy Sloan. So that'll do it. But at the end of four and a half innings of play, your score, Pikeville four, Prestonsburg one. We'll be right back. This is your Intermountain Sports Network. Now's your chance for a great deal on smoke and fast internet from Gearhart Broadband. Upgrade to the smoldering speed you need, up to one gig, and add Plume Adaptive Wi-Fi to reach every corner of your home. Experience no lag gaming, your favorite music, web surfing, HD video streaming, and connect to the latest smart devices. If you're ready for an upgrade, call or click Gearhart Broadband for a great offer today. Sharing a big family moment, working hard from home, relaxing with a friend. Welcome to life in the broadband age, where reliable internet has never been more important. Gearheart Broadband keeps your family connected with consistent speeds up to one gig and plume adaptive Wi-Fi. Make sure your home's ready for life in the broadband age. Call our local service team or visit Gearheart Broadband online to learn more. Mike will now on top, four to one. And Megan Hyden stands in against Wendy Phillips. Swung on and missed. Evens the count up at one and one. Wayne Fugit says that was a curve. <laughs> one and two as Hyden swings and misses again. Phillips really finding her groove now, Ken, as she is coasted here the last three innings. Ball tapped foul. Angela Howell and Shelly Greathouse do up here for Prestonsburg here in the bottom of the fifth. Inside for a ball. Let's go, let's go. 
Phillips is 2-2, swung on, took a little off, and it gets away from Trimble. She'll have to throw down to complete the out. But the strikeout nonetheless by Wendy Phillips, as she really is lethal, Ken, when she takes something off that pitch. She's really, really pitched a good game. Gave up one run in the second inning. And very little sense. You talking about me? <laughs> yes. Saying that I have very little sense? <laughs> Oh, I know. Uh, uh, She's uh -huh. giving up very little bit. Very I little. Understand. Angela Howe stands in. And pitch appeared to be inside for a ball. What has Howe done here tonight? Uh, Howe grounded out to first base and singled for a second time up. Pitch swung on and missed. Angela one for two. Trying to get aboard here. Two and one to count. The pitch swung on and missed. Weak swing that time by Howe. She was not ready on that one. Evens the count up at 2-2. Shelly Greathouse waiting on the on, in the on-deck circle. Pitch outside for a ball. Three and one. Or check that three and two. Three and two. Yeah, I've got to where I correct myself now. Pitch is <laughs> tapped over the head of the pitcher, and Kimberland can't field it, and Howell will be safe. As you can look out through there, Ken, the field is extremely rough, as uh, this is a, I believe this field doubles as a little league field, and uh, there's a, actually a mound out there. Most uh, these, they're not supposed to be a mound. Let's put it that way. <laughs> But uh, nonetheless, a mound out there that caused that one, but runner aboard, Howell will go to second and throw down, not in time as Howell slides in under the tag of Emily Johnson. And she'll be safe with the stolen base. Nice throw there, and almost at her. Tremble, a, uh, as we said, a very fine defensive catcher. Shelly Greathouse in there, and she slaps it down the first baseline. It's fair ball, and Howell, Coast, she was jogging to third, and instead of uh, hustling, she just uh, sort of walked in there. She could have scored easily on that, Ken, but uh, really did not have her head in it that in the play as she just uh, jogged down to third. So Shelly Greathouse, a nice job of hitting that time as she drove that one right down that left field. Right over, right over third base down the left field line. Good job. Yes, it was. So first and third, one gone here, bottom of the fifth inning. Kimmy Nunnery stands in. Great house goes, and Pockville will not throw down. So runners at second and third now. So Prestonsburg with a thread here in the bottom of the fifth against Wendy Phillips. And Nunnery gets the bat on it, and one run will score, but Nara goes to first in time for the out. Great house, a good job of uh, base running that time. She advances all the way to third, and Howell scores. So, you know, cut the lead in half. Pot will now on top four to two as Amelia Conley stands in. Amelia has the power, to Ken, to uh, change his score with one swing. She swings at the first pitch and fouls it straight back. She had the power to change the value of someone's automobile with that swing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> calls them to go see the insurance adjuster, but two gone bottom of the fifth inning. Wendy Phillips trying to bear down. She takes a little off and fooled Conley. Conley well out in front that time. But if your car gets hit, I understand there's a local dealership having a big sale early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> we'll not get into that. There's a story behind that, folks. And outside for a ball. Phillips wanted that one. Amber Trimble did a good job freezing the, that ball when she caught it. And strike three called as Amelia Conley looks at strike three. And at the end of five complete, Pikeville on top, four to two. We'll be right back. This is your Intermountain Sports Network. Sharing a big family moment, relaxing with a friend. Welcome to life in the broadband age. Gearheart Broadband keeps your family connected. 
with consistent speeds and plume Wi-Fi. Call or go online to learn more. With families spending more time at home together this year, it's a great time to level up your internet for the speed and Wi-Fi you need to power game consoles and computers at peak performance. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to upgrade. Smart devices make our lives better, but they're also susceptible to hackers. That's why Plume helps identify when a device is acting strange. You mean like talking to itself for no reason? I'm talking to the audience. We're in the top of the sixth inning here, Ken. This game moving right along. Brandy Sloan out to face uh, the Pikeville Panthers for the sixth time. She'll face Sarah Boyd here. Pikeville on top, four to two. Sloan's first pitch is well high. Sloan rocks and fires. Nice pitch right at, right at the belt that time. Good pitch by Brandy Sloan, one and one. Low for a ball, two and one. Sloan trying to step it up just a little bit, I think, Ken. Those last two or three pitches have really had some smoke on them. This one high for a ball, ball three. If Sloan gets in trouble here, I don't know how much longer Coach Clay will stay with her. She has thrown a lot of pitches in this game. The 3-1 in there, call strike two. Full count now. Sloan trying to battle back against Sarah Boyd. And pitch inside, ball four. A leadoff hitter aboard for the pitcher, Wendy Phillips. Phillips with a little conference now with Coach Sayer. Down the third baseline. Sloan has walked four of the last five batters. Really struggling with her control now. And the one batter she didn't walk hit a line drive right back at her that she was able to turn to turn a double play on. Boyd faked going to second on the pitch. Pitch is high for a ball. One ball and one strike to count. Wendy Phillips, the pitcher, trying to help her cause. And she smacks this one into center field. Brooke Coleman, nice basket catch that time as Coleman has had to move uh, a long way to her right that time, but made a nice catch. So one gone. Top of the order, Emily Johnson, the shortstop. She will stand in. She shows bunt. Howes faked the throw as Boyd stopped about halfway and comes back to first. Angela Howell ready to come out of there firing, Ken. She was. Johnson lays the bunt down. It goes foul, though. As they're turning on the lights here at the stadium. Hope they put out some heat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hope those sodium vapor have uh, a few kilowatts of uh, heat in them. I'd about imagine it's cold anywhere out there, but if you're running around, it wouldn't be too bad. But. Wayne Fugit. We're, we're pretty inactive over here, though. <laughs> <laughs> Only thing moving is our mouth, which is normal. Sloan takes a little bit off, and it gets away from Hal, and that'll advance the runner down to second. Johnson just blew that one by or check that, Sloan blew that one by Johnson and for out number two. Brandy appeared to be able to rear back for a little extra on that one and Jill Kimberlane will stand in now with two outs, Sarah Boyd at second. I go on top four to two, this one over the head of Howe and all the way to the screen, that'll advance Boyd down to third.
And this one driven right back up the middle. Good clutch hitting. Two out base hit by Jill Kimberlane scores the run. So Prestonsburg uh, got a run last inning, and Pikeville answers right back. They get the run back, and it's 5-2 to two now. Top of the sixth inning. Game winding down here, so every run very important. Two gone, Sam Nara at the plate. Kimberlane fake going to second, but uh, Angela Howe fires to first to run her back. This one chop foul. Sloan rocks and fires, and that one a little bit low. I believe the count is three and one. It is. So in danger of walking Sam Nara with Allison Harris due up next. Sloan rocks and fires. It's well. It's over the head of Nara. Ball four. So runners at first and second now. That's 10, 10 walks now for Sloan in the game. Sloan's first pitch. Outside for a ball. Two, two gone. Two gone and two on. Two gone, two on, and one in. Sloan's pitch is slapped by Harris down the right field line. Harris, very good hitter. She will stand in there and swing. Michelle Hall, left fielder on deck. Sloan takes a little off, but it's high for a ball. Two and one to count. And this one all the way to the screen, that'll move both runners up. So instead of first and second, your runners now are at second and third. But ball three to Allison Harris and Brandy Sloan again in danger of loading the bases up. She was moving right along, Ken, but as this weather's changed, she has been unable to find the plate. And this one slapped down the right field line again, but foul. Just barely foul. As Bob Euchre would say, just a bit outside. <laughs> That's where we are. We're in the cheap seat thing. The cheap seat. Sitting on a camera case. and <laughs> Temperature approximately 44 degrees. <laughs> that was your 104 cast. You said that would be a call to 105 cast now. And strike three calls. So Brandy Sloan able to come back and get the strikeout, but not before Pike will be able to score one more run. And at the end of five and a half innings of play, Pop one top, five to two. We'll be right back. This is your Intermountain Sports Network. This changes everything. Gearheart TV is available now. It's the digital TV service delivered to your smart TV or connected devices by Gearheart Broadband. Sign up now at mygtv.com. Gearheart Broadband gets solutions for your small business right. Fiber connects you to the cloud with speeds up to one gig with digital voice, the right video solutions, and local support. Make the right call. Gearheart Broadband. Fully wireless sensors mean easy installation without damage from drilling. One app gives you total control over every aspect of your home. The ultimate deterrent for porch pirates. Know exactly when you receive a delivery. You need security that is a fully integrated security solution. Encrypted end-to-end -end and professionally monitored. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. This time is winding down here on this one hour and a half time limit. This may about do it here if uh, Prestonsburg can't get something going. Brooke Coleman looks at ball one from Wendy Phillips. 
It'll be Coleman, Dameron, and Sloan do up for the Lady Black Cats. Ball is slapped straight back. One and one to count now against Brooke Coleman, who laced a single into right field or left field last time up. And she hits this one, and Johnson knocks it down, picks it up, and fires not in time. Good hustle by Brooke Coleman down Good the first hustle. baseline. She was really running hard to beat that out. Margaret Dameron at the plate now. Christiansburg in need of at least three runs here to keep this game moving. A lot of ways a girls softball game can end and one of them is time. This one popped up by Dameron. Kimberlane comes in, nice running catch to record the first out. Brandy Sloan comes in to face her counterpart. Phillips' first pitch at the knees, call strike one. Trimble comes up firing, trying to catch Coleman napping. She didn't have none of that. Phillips' pitch is swung on and popped up, and Sarah Boyd giving chase, and she brings hauls it in. Looked a little shaky out there, but uh, able to haul it in for out number two. So Stacy Goble will stride to the plate. She may very well represent Prestonsburg's last out. As the game is winding down toward that hour and a half time limit. Goble swings at the first pitch from Phillips and misses. Strike one. And this one popped up down the first baseline. Nice running play that time by Potter as she was able to haul that one in. And at the end of six innings, your score, Pockwell five, Prestonsburg two, and that will be it as the officials have called it for a time limit uh, rule. And your final score, not at the end of six, but your final score is the Pockwell Lady Panthers have gone on the road and improved their record to 18 and six as they have defeated the Prestonsburg Lady Black Cats who fall to 12 and six on the season. Five to two. Ken Hall, I tell you, it was a uh, very well played game here. These young ladies have really, uh, they'll probably meet again before the season ends if they meet in the postseason. But they uh, probably will. Ex excellent job of pitching here today by Wendy Phillips. She's just, just exceptional. Wendy Phillips uh, got in trouble a couple of times, but uh, for the most part kept, Pres uh, kept Pressensburg off balance with that off-speed pitch. She was just really able to call on that and throw it for strikes when she wanted to and uh, makes it tough. But uh, with the weather, I think uh, both these teams had really uh, had some uh, off time this, this week, and uh, but you couldn't tell it. A uh, couple of teams really sharp. Just one of them uh, able to plate just a few, couple more runs than the other. But again, from Archer Park, your final score, the Pinewood Lady Panthers defeat the Lady Black Cats of Prestonsburg 5-2. For Brian Lee and Wayne Fugit on controls, and my counterpart in crime, Ken Hall, I'm Danny Van Hoos. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next week, barring uh, <laughs> another monsoon. Right? Another monsoon, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hopefully we'll be out there bringing you some uh, baseball action or softball action next week. So this has been a production of your Intermountain Sports Network. Smart devices make our lives better, but they're also susceptible to hackers. That's why Plume helps identify when a device is acting strange. You mean like talking to itself for no reason? I'm talking to the audience.